What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and it's time to talk a bit about the Planets competition and some of the cool entries that we got sent in for that. And the way I'm going to do this is very much like we did it with the last competition. So I'm going to start off by spotlighting some of the designs that we thought were particularly cool. And then at the end of all that, you guys are going to get to vote on who wins the big grand prize, essentially. And I felt a really good place to kick off would be with some of the entries from one of the guys who won last year's competition, Banshee Metal. Some of you guys will remember that really crazy leopard tank sort of crawling base that he made. Well, he's come back this time with something that's a lot more vanilla than that and a lot more friendly on the FPS, but still pretty damn cool. So one of the lovely bits about this competition is I get to just jump in and play with some toys. Let's do that now and I can show you exactly what these two pretty cool looking vehicles are all about. So we're going to kick off with the right hand side one and as you can probably guess this is all about cargo transport and while that's not the most practical thing in Space Engineers because hooking these things up tends to be a bit of a nightmare and so on, he's done a few things with this one that makes it a bit more practical than most. So what I'm going to do is kind of use a mix of my live footage and b-roll here just to make sure you can see quickly what's going on. But he set it all up really nicely so that I quite like the aesthetic, there's a couple of little touches on there that are quite nice like extra thrusters for braking so that you don't have an issue with slowing down despite that weight on the back. And finally, we've got a series of buttons so we can control everything from down on floor. And these are duplicated on the other half of course. So let's use this out unload timer and get things moving. And you'll start to see that that arm moves out. I didn't even know there were pistons on this to begin with honest, I, honestly, I hadn't noticed. As I clicked that button I saw it will start to move out really really smoothly. He's using the easy automation mod to get it to move quite this nicely. But you can start to get the idea that what's going to happen is the arm's going to extend out, there's a camera on there to help you target and line it up if you really need to, and then it's going to extend out and get to that perfect height to hook onto the container behind. But that's kind of only half the cool bit because I think the coolest of all of this is how it actually pulls it up onto the back. So now we've got this thing positioned down, let's jump around and actually move the vehicle into position. And this takes this takes a little getting used to because you've got those thrusters on the back. You've got to remember that you've got those thrusters and they're going to push you backwards pretty quickly. So you can see we're kind of sort of not really lined up. Let me take our handbrake off and see if I can do a slightly better job of lining us up. Ish. That should be enough hopefully. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. Let's maybe... You can see what I mean about how quickly you go backwards. You really got to tap it gently and just let it move itself almost. Otherwise, you're going to run into this thing with tons of force. I think we're in position. Yep, ready to lock. Now, I've locked us on. Let me get to the spectator camera. I'm always amazed when I can lock these things on without the whole thing exploding. And watch as this thing moves as we go in. I'll probably again switch to some footage, but if we hit the now in load timer, number six, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So to begin with, it picks the whole mechanism up and lifts it up, but then it starts to roll it forwards on those rear wheels, and those rear wheels are super duper clever, like it makes it kind of work. It, it just doesn't function properly without those, it means that it can ride really quite smoothly. Then it starts to sort of scrape up the back, but at the perfect angle for that to be kind of smooth and not cause too many problems. And eventually it all sits down in a position that at least kind of looks like it's held in the back. Now admittedly it is actually being held on the rotor and not anything else, but I still quite like that whole action. And now let's jump to back to our pilot view and we can take this thing for a drive and I can show you that actually it handles reasonably well given that it's got a huge great lump on the back. Now it's really hard to see when driving like this because of course I've got this thing in the way of my vision. So let's in fact let's stick with first person, it's probably easier. You can see I haven't started the timer for the LCD which is why that's not updating but you can kind of get the idea we're driving around just fine and no real issues you know it, it kind of handles all right surprisingly despite the massive thing on the back that is actually swinging around a little bit. Space Engineers has got a bit of give to it. Now I can imagine in multiplayer this is not going to play ball anything like so well so it's worth taking that into account you know there's rotors in there a bit of desync and they're going to go flying. But in single player, it's actually pretty usable. So finally, come back to the starting location. Let's unload this thing again and show you what it looks like from that perspective. So let's stop up and brake on. I'm gonna jump out the seat and let's start the unloading procedure. Basically the same thing in reverse. 
They hit that button, you'll see it'll start to move out and then I'm going to go back to this pre-recorded footage so I can speed it up a bit because you don't want to spend too long seeing the same thing. But it's all really lovely and smooth. I love how those wheels come back down, hit the ground again and just slide it all off. It actually works reliably. I've had remarkably little issues with it and that's also including things like these rollers here, for example, to make sure that it's all nice and kind of it comes in easily even if it's not centered they kind of help pull it into center using the little bit of flex you have in this whole system pretty damn cool so that's this vehicle and this is probably the one i'm going to be judging for the competition but he did enter two and i thought i'd show you this other one as well because it's it's one of the few vehicles that i would consider to be as wheel braking as like the dual layer stuff that i've done really interesting how he's put this together and i love a couple of the extra elements he's added so you notice we've got the same speed and radar and so on. I can go and start these timers and get them working. You'll see the radar timer's not working. If you guys want a tip, by the way, you want these things to always work, even on map load, all you need to do is re-add that radar timer again, but on start. And what happens is, because this is trigger now when the server loads, it's running this so fast that it hasn't triggered itself to run again. You, you don't catch it in the gap. So because of that, the program's not running, they need to be reloaded. If you add this in as well, this has got like a 10 second delay on it. So this is always still running. It takes 10 seconds for it to not to be. So this kicks the whole system back off again, and then this thing keeps going properly. Just so you know, let's trigger that. You see the radar scanning away there, and we've got control. Now what's so cool about this vehicle, other than obviously I'm a little bit of a fan of Rover buggy vehicles, looks almost like a big version of maybe the B a little bit. I don't know. It's got that sort of vibe. Is if we open the UI, you'll notice he's got a few extra features on here that aren't so standard. So first of all, both of these vehicles have had a jack system built into them. Yeah, this one apparently is slightly broken, but that's fine. One of the pistons isn't working, <laughs> but it seems to be working just fine. No worries. That's all good. But this one also has two different settings for the wheels, which I think is awesome. We've got a rough terrain timer, which I think is our standard mode. And then we've got these high jumps timer. So it's a bit like some of my vehicles, but without some of the sacrifices that I made because he's changing the wheel settings on the fly. And let me give you a little demonstration of what this means. The other thing he's done is he's using, you can see thrusters on the side to compensate. That's because a lot of the steering in this comes from gyros, but that means that if you do this, you've got some damping to try and, don't break the wheel, you've got some damping to try and stop that drift. So it's kind of interesting. It means you can effectively use the speed in a way that you can't really otherwise. So can't complain about that, but yeah, let's go give this thing a little test because you're not getting the real idea. First of all, it's quick. It will travel fast. So let's take this slope here. This looks appropriate. No worries. Get a bit of air come back down you guys will be recognizing this sort of behavior won't you this is one of the vehicles where you can't break the wheels on it <laughs> it just does silly things so i figured it'd be worth showing this i just love the fact that he's actually gone to this extra level of putting these little timers in to give you different wheel settings again it's the easy automation script but that script is capable of doing some really damn cool stuff right let's jump this canyon no the juke boys are not going to make it the Juke Boys did not make it. That's that's a forgivable one, and I didn't press the high jumps timer. Maybe I needed to. Either way, a couple of really cool designs from Banshee Metal. Perhaps not quite so full-on impressive when you first see them as his Leopard from last year, but at the same time, I really like just the, the thinking behind it, the concepts behind it. That little cargo trolley, it's just fun to play with. It's a bit like the bridge layer was. The bridge layer was just fun to mess around with because it's, it's, you know, it's like playing with train sets. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Keep an eye out on the channel for a lot more Planets Competition stuff coming soon, which means a lot more Space Engineers content, of course. If you did like it, then please hit that like button. If you didn't like it, then you know where dislike is. By all means, hammer that as well. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll catch you for the next one.